Sunday's tutorial. Now, just to refresh your memory if you don't already know how our tutorial videos work. Step one, the exercise question is posed. You as a student pauses the video and then attempts the question. Step two, continue to play the video. A hint is provided if a little further assistance is required. Again, you pause the video and then complete the exercise. Step three, just continue to play the video. The answer is provided and the power of this tutorial is that we then explain to you how we actually got to that answer. And then step four, continue to the next question. So let's get underway. Here's our first one. Determine the total resistance and the total current in the circuit below. So here you've got a series parallel circuit. Pause the video here and have a go. Here's the hint. So uh, resolve the square of resistance R2 to R5 first by adding the series parallel pairs. And here's our answer. We end up with 60 ohms and 0 0.33 amps or 330 milliamps. How did we get there? I'll just turn the pen pointer on. So first thing we did was add these two groups of resistors here, which gave us 30 ohms and 30 ohms in parallel. Simply use the shortcut. If you've got two resistors in parallel of the same value, then the parallel addition is just the half, the value of the resistors, so 15R. Then we simply added the 15R into our 33 and our 12, giving us an R total as requested in the question of 60 ohms. Then the current becomes reasonably straightforward. In the circuit, they told us we had an applied voltage of 20 volts. So 20 divided by 60 gives us 330 milliamps or 0 0.3 of an amp. Our second question, determine the following, the total resistance, total current, total power, and the bolt drop across each of the resistors. So again, series parallel network. Pause the video here and have a go. Here's the hint, resolve for the total R first, and then work your way back with what that information that can, you can derive from that. So here's my worked solution. First thing I did was take the parallel between the uh, 40 and 16 ohms, giving me 11.43. That allowed me to work out what the uh, total resistance was at 47.43 ohms. Left the R or the ohm symbol off there. Then current total was pretty easy to work out. We've got voltage divided by resistance. So our volts total was given to us on the diagram at 30 volts. And we worked out the resistance total from here. And that's going to give us 633 milliamps or 0.633 of an amp. We also had to work out the uh, total power. That was probably the next thing we could work out. And I went the I squared R option. So I just took the total current 0.633 squared, multiplied it by the resistance. And that gave us, we have 19 watts of power being emanated by the circuit. Then we had to find the voltage drop across each of the voltages. V1, it's nice and easy. Our 20 ohms multiplied by our current gave us 12.66 volts. V2 equally as easy, we just take our 16 ohms and multiply also by 0.63 of an amp, giving us 10.13 volts. And then finally, we can do the same again, just remembering that we've got to use the equivalent resistance, the parallel equivalent resistance in here, which was 11.43. 
and we simply took that value there multiplied it by the total current and we get 7.24 now we should be able to double check ourselves by adding these three voltages together and they add back up to very close to 30 volts so that's a good way to check yourself Next, we determine the voltage, so at point A, B, and C with reference to common. So pause here. Here's your hint, add up all the resistors first for R total. Then use the current to calculate your voltage drops. So here's my working through the problem. Just turn the pen on. My R total came in at uh, 60 ohms. Just had to add the three resistors together. What's the total current? 12 volts divided by 60. We were told that we had a total of 12 volts applied and giving us 200 milliamps or 0.2 of an amp. The voltage at A is reasonably straightforward because they told us there was 12 volts applied there must be 12 volts at A nice and easy next thing I worked out was the voltage drop across um, V2 for point B and we worked out there is 4 volts get my forward to look a bit better there we go 4 volts across that resistor and at VC there is 6 volts, so 6 volts across this resistor. Also worked out what the voltage across R1 was, and that gave us 2 volts up here, 2 volts. So with reference to common or ground or 0 volts down here, the voltage at C, nice and simple, will be 6 volts. The voltage at B, will be 6 plus 4 giving me 10 volts at B and of course we've already got A and again just to check ourselves 6 plus 4 plus 2 equals 12 volts so with, with reference to common we had 6 volts 10 volts and 12 volts Determine the voltages across RL the load. So you can see here, I've got 30 ohm load. So pause here, have a go at this one. The hint is I uh, use the shortcut for parallel RL and R3. So we parallel R3 and RL, we get 15 ohms, obviously. Get that pointer to come on. So that gives us 15 ohms. We just add that to the other resistors, giving us a total of 45 ohms. Currents are to be straightforward. Volts divided by resistance, 12 divided by 45, giving us 267 milliamps. And then finally, the voltage across here. And if we just use the equivalent resistance, and the equivalent resistance between R and L of 15, so we just take the current multiplied by 15, and it tells us that we have 4 volts across the equivalent. Therefore, we must have 4 volts across R, L. Question 5 for the circuit below, calculate voltage drop across R5, the branch current through I3, and the total resistance, uh, total resistance and total current. So pause here. So you need to find the total current first, so resolve the parallels and find the total current. So here's their answer. Just paralleled to three resistors, comes to four ohms. 
20 plus 4 plus 6 is 30 ohms. The current total ends up being 1 amp. It's going to make the rest of the maths pretty easy. If I've got 1 amp going through the 20 ohm resistor, I'm going to have 20 volts across it. Across R5, which is 6 ohms, I'm going to have 6 volts. But then I do a bit of Kirchhoff's voltage law here. 30 minus 6 minus 20 means I must have 4 volts across the parallel network. And we're going to find the current through I3. I now have the voltage and the resistance. So it's a matter of just 4 divided by 24. It tells me that I have a current of 166 milliamps or 0.16 of an amp through that resistor. Question 6, this is the last question in the tutorial, but it's a biggie. Uh, question 6, for the circuit below, calculate total current, the current through R7, and the voltage across R10. So pause here, and I'm going to give you the hint straight up. Um, redraw the circuit stage by stage as you simplify the down to the resistance total. Then as you work back, using your results, you also really need to reuse those diagrams. So keep a track, draw yourself the appropriate number of diagrams as you resolve it down. So pause here. So here's my worked example. First thing I did was um, do the series connection between R3 and R11 and that resolved to 55 ohms. That's this one. Then I resolved the series network between R4 and R5 and it came down to 30. And then I resolved the parallel between R10 and R45 and that brought me down to 19.6. Next. I resolved the parallel network between R30, between the 30 of the R6 and R7, and that gave me 30, 20, 30, resolving down to 8.57 ohms in series with R2, R5, and the 19.6. Next. I then resolved all of those three that were in, in series, um, the 10, the 8, the 40, and the 19, giving me a total of 78.17 in that part of the circuit, which I now have that in parallel with 55R. So my next step is to resolve the uh, 55R with a 78, brings me down to 31.76 ohms. I can put that now in series with the 25 and the 50, giving me a total result now of 106.76 ohms. And since I'm there with the uh, full 100 volts, you can see we have a, uh, I'll just turn the screen pointer on again, our 100 volt supply divided by my resistance is going to give me 936 milliamps or 0.9636 amps. So I've got my total resistance and I've got my total current. Now I've got to start working back up the other way. So the next thing I can do is I can take that total current and I can multiply it by the resistance value of 31.7 to work out the voltage drop across there. So I now have a voltage drop of 29.7, oops, gone too far, just go back, across there. So 29.7 volts across the 31.76 ohms. So next, I can uh, use those voltages and current, so I have the 0.379 across that, 
I have the 29.6 volts now across the 55 and across the 78.17 ohms. So I can use those that current and those voltages. My next step is to reinstate my 8.7 so I know that my current is 3.79 through the 10 ohm network from here from R2 through the 78 so I can now work out the voltage drop across the 78 so that's simply the 3.79 amps multiplied by the 8.57 giving me 3.25 volts across that network so I've just redrawn, put the diagram back in here for you. So I've worked out what the voltage drop is across R7. And I also have the current, obviously, through R7. So I can work out the current through R7. Because we know R7 is 30 ohms, we can simply say 3.25 divided by 30 gives me 0.1 of an amp, 0.18 of an amp through that. So continuing back up into our circuit, if we know that we have 0.398 of an amp running through this part of the circuit, so again, all I've done is taken the current that comes through there, then it comes through here, and it's still 0 0.398 here. So it has to be that same current going through the 19 ohm. So I can simply take the 19 ohms, multiply by 0.398, and that tells me I've got a voltage of 7.8 volts across there, and it's also the same voltage that's across R10. So that tells me that the voltage of 19.6 is also across V10, which is 7.8 volts. So So there you have it, we have the values all worked out. We've worked out the voltage drop, the current through seven, and we had worked out the voltage drop across R10. So I hope you enjoyed that particular last exercise. It, it looked more complicated than it turned out to be. Just once you had resolved it down to its components and got the absolute basics, it didn't take that much to work back to the values that were required. So that ends DC lesson number eight exercise tutorial.